Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at Morphe's with an exceptionally rare and cool piece. This is an MKB-42H, a Machinen Carabiner 42 made by the Hainel Company. This is the original version of the German Sturmgewehr. Now this project actually dates back to 1938, a lot earlier than I think most people realize. It's in 38 that the R&D branch of the German Army tasks the Hainel Company with developing a machine carbine, a basically an intermediate caliber selective fire infantry shoulder rifle. This is a concept that has been around. There was some development of this sort of thing in the 30s in Germany, uh, and not just in Germany. The French have experimented with it, the Americans did. It's not a totally novel concept. Now the, the original uh, design brief was that has, you know, a typical for German early World War II, in this case pre-World War II, they wanted it to be a gas trap design so they didn't drill a gas port in the barrel. Uh, Hainel agrees to that design concept at first. By 1939 they've got the first cartridges, uh, 8x33mm short cartridges. Um, those are developed by the Pulte company. They're delivered to Hainel, and at that point the design's already changed. Uh, Hugo Schmeisser is the designer at Hainel who's, doing, who's leading this project. And it obvious, it's obvious to him that this gas trap thing is dumb. Um, and they redesign it to use a gas piston. They get the army to agree to a gas piston and a tilting bolt. And the tilting bolt is actually specifically inspired by the Czech ZB26 light machine gun. And you'll see that when we take it apart. Very similar locking system. At any rate, uh, once the cartridges are in hand, the design can go forward. By 1941, the first couple of prototypes are ready at Hainel. And at this point, one, well, let me back up for a sec. One of the fundamental characteristics of the Sturmgewehr series of rifles on, for Germany was the fact that they were made out of primarily stamped sheet metal. Germany had limited supplies of uh, important alloying minerals to use, uh, alloying compounds to use to make high quality steel for forging and milling. And stamping allows you to use basically a pretty low quality carbon steel and get very good results as long as you have parts designed for those materials. And they recognized that this was going to be an issue and the intention of this machine carbine was always to be a stamped gun, but Hainel was set up for milling as its general manufacturing technique. So what Schmeisser does with his first couple of prototypes is they're manufactured on mills but the parts are designed to eventually become stamped, to be replaced by stamped parts. So 1941 the first prototypes are ready, sadly none of those prototypes are known to survive today. Uh, and that leads to a contract for 50 sample guns to be manufactured. And in order to do those, Hainel looks around for companies with stamping expertise to help translate this milled design into a stamped one. They find the Merswerke company out of Frankfurt that has a lot of stamping experience, hasn't done guns before, but hey, we can, we can fix that. They get together and they produce this, essentially, the MKB-42H. Uh, 50 sample guns are ready at the end of March 1942, along with, by the way, one sample gun from Walther of a totally different design but using the same cartridge and to the same basic concept. Walther found out that this was an ongoing program and they got in and developed their own prototype. That is the MKB-42W. It is far more rare than this and I do have a separate video, so if you're interested in that one I'll link to that video in the description text. Now guns, 50 trial guns are ready in March. They set up a troop trials in April. I think you get the idea that you get the impression people are pretty excited about this. This is a this is a game changing sort of rifle. It's a fundamentally better gun, for, far better than what the German infantry has at that time with K98K bolt actions. But it's conceptually better than anything the Russians or the Americans have as well. So Hitler's going to be there, they're going to demonstrate it, they're going to test it, it's going to be awesome. And they get out there and they show it to Hitler and he's like, yeah, I don't like it. No, no, don't do that. Uh, he didn't like the idea of the reduced power cartridge. Uh, Hitler's main complaints about this concept were he thinks they're going to need uh, they need to be able to deliver accurate effective fire out to 12 to 1500 meters for combat in the desert, which is absolutely ludicrous uh, in terms of like actual aimed fire. Doesn't like the idea of having an additional cartridge in the logistics system, and just doesn't like the thing in general. Um, he wants like full power scoped rifles, not heavy submachine guns, sort of. 
Anyway, the trials are already scheduled, they take place. And the results are kind of mixed. It turns out this isn't as accurate as people were hoping. They blame that partly on the short sight radius, and partly on the fact that it is developed as an open bolt firing gun. One of the concerns, this is intended to be capable of sustained, maybe not sustained, but intended to be used in full auto. That's part of the reason for the uh, shorter cartridge, is so that it can actually be very controllable in full auto. And they were worried about the potential of cook-offs. So the idea of a cook-off is when you shoot so much, so fast, that the barrel gets hot enough that when you chamber a cartridge and just let it sit in the chamber, the heat from the chamber heats up the cartridge to the point that the cartridge spontaneously combusts and fires on its own. You can find plenty of videos on YouTube of people deliberately doing this to rifles, and then sometimes acting shocked when it happens. The way that you prevent that from happening is you set the gun up so that until you pull the trigger the bolt is locked open. Called open bolt firing. And this is why most machine guns are open bolt firing designs, is to prevent there from ever being a problem of cook-off. Well, in this case, the other downside to an open bolt firing gun is the bolt's back here, and when you pull the trigger the bolt slams forward, chambers a cartridge, and then fires it. So if you're trying to make a precise single shot, the gun kind of goes clunk and then fires. This isn't a big deal if you have a machine gun bolted to a big tripod, but if it's a shoulder rifle or a submachine gun, it definitely impacts your accuracy. And they found that in these April trials. The Car 98 Ks that were used as comparators were more accurate in almost all situations. Now, this wasn't a trial testing overall firepower. They weren't doing house clearing with these things in April, but um, they realized that, okay, cook-off really isn't an issue with this gun. You know, you'd have to fire hundreds of rounds to get the barrel that hot, and guys can't even carry that much ammo. Far more important to develop a closed bolt firing version of the gun to make it more accurate. That's more important. And we don't really need to worry about cook-offs. So as early as April of 42, they start development of a closed bolt version. Now you'll see this in a minute. The fire control group in this is very simple. Um, and they had to redesign the fire control group. The way they do this to make it closed bolt and hammer fired is actually by just taking the fire control group out of Walther's MKB-42 and transplanting it into the Hanel gun. And that's why you'll see a difference in the grip design between this open bolt version and the MP43s that are closed bolt firing. Anyway, uh, closed bolt version goes into development, but the army knows that like, the, the army in Russia needs firepower, they need guns. Their progress stalled out and died in the winter of 1941. They're now under heavier and heavier assault by larger and larger groups of Russian troops. The Germans are getting outnumbered. They have bolt-action rifles and machine guns, but they need more firepower. And so the army decides, we're going to put this into production anyway as just like a temporary holdover. Yeah, we know we're already going to be replacing it, that doesn't matter because we've got the tooling set up, or mostly set up now. Let's just put it into production, push the guns out, get the guys something, even if it's just a few months earlier, that's a few months earlier and it's valuable. In addition, if we start putting guns like this out in the field, it will become possible to answer some tactical questions about them, to learn what are the best ways to use them in combat, and to get information on some really kind of boring aspects of the gun, like how do we carry the magazines? What sort of magazine pouch is best? Do we want 30 round mags because they hold more ammo? Or perhaps would we be better off with 20 or 25 round mags because they're shorter? This thing is a very long magazine. And that information is going to be largely the same for this as for a closed bolt version of the gun, so we can start learning some of that. And so the plan is to put this thing into production, and that's slated to go into production in October of 1942. First, first full-scale batches coming off the lines. Now, spoiler, that wouldn't happen, but we'll get to that in a minute. First, at this point, let me pull this apart, and let me show you how it actually works. Compared to the Sturmgewehr that we're more familiar with, this is a pretty darn simple gun. At first glance, this looks an awful lot like a standard Sturmgewehr, but the closer you look, the more things change a bit. So, right off the bat, let me go ahead and pull the magazine. This would remain the same standard magazine through the entire Sturmgewehr family. You'll notice this one is marked MKB-42, but then it's overstamped, or extra stamped MP-44. Uh, this holds 30 rounds, 792 by 33 millimeter Kurtz. Uh, 
And yeah, the design they had when they did the first prototypes, or the first 50 trial gun sample of these, would remain the standard pattern magazine throughout the rest of the war. One thing that Germany actually did right with this gun. The designation is engraved here on the left side of the receiver, MKB, that's Maschinen Karabiner 42, the H is for Hanel. Now if we look at the grip, there's not much in the way of controls. There's actually no safety lever on this at all. The fire selector is this push button type. You can see it's marked uh, D on this side for Dauerfeuer, or multiple shot. And if I push it through, I have an E on that side for Einzelfeuer, or single shot. That's your selector. Your safety, well there are actually two safeties. One of them is up here, and it's actually marked with an S. And the idea is, just like with a typical submachine gun, like the MP40, you can pull the bolt handle back, rotate it up, and lock it into this notch. And that of course prevents the gun from firing, because the bolt is physically locked in the open position. So that's one option, uh, but that does of course leave the gun pretty open. Uh, even if you close the dust cover on this side, you still have this big old slot that's open. There's no way to really fix all these issues, but you do have a second option for the safety. If you notice at the top of the charging handle there is this little red dot. The red uh, indicates ready to fire, indicates danger. And we have a hole in the receiver here, and another similar hole right here underneath the dust cover spring. What this allows me to do is pull the bolt back to that position, push the handle in, and lock the bolt in place in the receiver. This is actually something that the British would do with the Sten gun as well, and you'll see it in some other submachine gun designs. This similarly prevents the gun from firing because all the trigger is doing is dropping a sear to let the bolt go forward, but the bolt's locked in place. This system also allows you to lock the bolt in position in the front. So you can drop the bolt. Now this is an open bolt firing gun, which means if you drop the bolt it either fires or the chamber is empty. You can then close the dust cover, lock it in place. You still have this open slot, but at least the front of the action can be completely closed up. Construction-wise we have a predominance of stamped parts here. The receiver is stamped, the grip frame is stamped, there is a solid milled trunnion inside here that has the locking surface and the connection where the barrel is attached. We have a sheet metal handguard that, yes, gets hot very quickly when you start shooting, and it's uh, presumably probably pretty cold in uh, the winter in Russia, but that's, that's what you got, just stamped sheet metal there. The barrel is the one on the bottom, the gas tube is on the top, and it goes all the way out to the front. Our gas block is here but the tube continues all the way out here, and the front sight block uh, attaches to both the gas tube and the barrel. There is a threaded barrel nut out here. This was, they did develop a grenade launcher attachment to this, as well as a blank firing adapter. One of, the, one of Hitler's complaints was that he wanted to ensure rifle grenade capability was maintained, so the designers kind of jumped at, hey maybe if we make a grenade launcher for it he'll Hitler will approve the gun. Didn't work, but they did put that on there. Um, some of the MKB-42Hs have bayonet lugs. This one does. Some of them do not. Uh, no one really knows exactly, seems to know exactly when that changed, but this fits the standard German K98K bayonet, which is kind of pretty cool. None of the, none of the later Sturmgewehr patterns will have bayonet lugs on them. And then, like the grenade launcher, another one of Hitler's things was wanting sniper rifles. So again, uh, the designers kind of jumped at the opportunity to maybe overcome an objection by developing a way to put a scope on the MKB-42. So these weren't, scope mounts weren't on the original guns, but they were put onto the production ones. And this is just a stamped mount, they, a stamped base, they developed a mount to put a one and a half power ZF-41 scope on here, on top of the rear sight, but it never really went into production. Uh, by the time this was being, you know, by the time they were in production it was already known that the gun wasn't going to be a, a long-term standard item, and so they didn't bother going into full development and production on the scope mounts. So there are a few out there. Um, in fact my previous video on this, one of these actually does have one of the mounts, uh, but they were never actually practically used. 
You may notice that the rear sight is relatively high off the gun compared to a Mauser, and you've got this nice drop in the stock. This is an inline designed gun, so the barrel lines up back to here and comes into the middle of the stock. This is a very comfortable gun to handle, to shoot. It's a little on the heavy side, um, but recoil is very slight. It doesn't climb much because the bore axis is in line with the stock right about here. Uh, and in order to do that, the sights have to be higher. All right, let's dive into disassembly. We have one spring-held push pin here. So if I push that out, pull it out completely, not captive. And then the buttstock is going to come off the back of the gun. If this looks like H and K, it's not a coincidence. Uh, a lot of H and K stuff was developed from an original basis of the MKB42H. Now the recoil spring is sort of connected to the internal, so we'll pull that out before we go any farther. But I will mention the recoil spring nests down in a hole all the way into the bolt. Unlock that, and then I can bring the bolt carrier, bolt, and op rod out the back of the gun. Now the spring comes off. So the recoil spring has this plug at the end of it that sits in this recess in the bolt carrier, the op rod assembly, like so. We have a gas piston out here at the end. You already saw the gas block. That comes back to a bolt carrier here. This rotates. Uh, it's actually threaded in. You can see it getting a little longer and shorter there. The reason for that is you have to be able to rotate this up to put it into that safety notch. On submachine guns, you're typically working with a cylindrical bolt, and you just rotate the whole bolt to do that. On this design, you got all this stuff hanging off, so instead the gas piston section rotates to accomplish that. The bolt, as you can see, if you're familiar with the ZB26, this is exactly the ZB26 system. It's a tilting bolt, so the locking surface is right here. It's a little hard to see down in there, but right in the bottom there, essentially behind that divot, is the locking block area of the trunnion. So this is going to travel forward like this. It's going to pick up a cartridge from the magazine. When it gets all the way to the barrel, this, the breech face, the bolt face here, is going to hit the barrel. It stops, but this bolt carrier is under spring pressure, so it's going to continue to push forward. As it does so, it is going to tip the bolt down as these two angles interact. That locks the bolt, and then you can see the firing pin protruding there. The last bit of forward travel, the end of bolt carrier here, slams into the firing pin there, which causes it to protrude forward, and that fires the cartridge. Then, of course, while this is locked in place like that, gas is diverted up into the gas piston. That is going to push the op rod and carrier back. When it gets to this point, these two hooks are going to interact, which pulls the bolt up, out of lock, and then allows the whole thing to cycle. In another element that would totally get copied by HK, the fire control group just pivots down. So HK would put a removable pin here. For the Sturmgewehr series, these are permanent rivets. But we can open this up and look at the fire control group, and it's a really simple one. Pull the trigger, and the sear drops. Now there is a semi-auto disconnector right here. So if I pull the trigger and then push that down, you can hear the click, and you can see the sear reset. So in semi-auto mode, when the bolt goes forward, it pushes that down, which resets it to require semi-auto. If I flip this over to full auto, that is already depressed, does nothing, and the gun's just going to fire as long as I hold the sear down. This is a really simple system, doesn't require much, and that sear is just holding on right here, this ledge on the front of the bolt. So when you pull that down, the whole thing can fly forward. There you go, there is a field stripped MKB42H. Uh, there really is a simpler gun than the later Sturmgewehr, although uh, the, the increased complexity in the Sturmgewehr was for good reason. So let's get back to talking about where this design went. 
Now the closed bolt version of the MKB, which would become known as the MP43-1, that gun is, is the first prototypes are ready in November of 1942. The, this is supposed to be in production by that point. It's still not yet. They're having trouble with it. They're having bureaucratic issues. They're having some of the standard just problems that you run into putting any new gun into production. But they're not, they're not ready yet. Don't have guns ready yet. Uh, but they do have the closed bolt version. So they set up another troop trial. This one's got some tactical elements in it. Uh, again, everyone's really excited. Like, we fixed the big problem. It's even better now. We'll bring Hitler out. We'll show him again. And now he'll see the light. And Hitler gets out in November of 42 and looks at it again and goes, oh, I've seen that. I still hate it. It's like, crap. Okay. Um, now, I have a separate video talking about uh, ultimately, Hitler would reject this thing three times before he eventually allowed it to be produced uh, without subterfuge inside the German arms industry. I have a separate video on that. I'll link to that in the description as well. It's a little beyond the scope of today's video on just the MKB-42H. But uh, the closed bolt version is clearly better. That is the way that development would go. By that point, the Walther MKB is, is tossed out of the competition. It was closed bolt from the beginning, but it was also a lot more complicated. It was less reliable. It was harder to build. So uh, they begin to develop the STG-43, well, the MP-43 at that point, and they do finally get this into production in January of 1943. Now, it's only a small batch at that point. It's just a couple hundred guns. They manage to scale it up. At its height, they'll be producing just over 3,000 of these a month, which sounds like a big number, but that's actually like 100 guns a day? It's not that big. Um, production would run from January 43 until September 43. And the first batch of these guns was shipped off to the Eastern Front uh, in April of 1943. So it was 2,000 of these guns, along with just a couple prototypes of the closed bolt Sturmgewehrs. Uh, and they're sent out for troop trials. And honestly, the troop trial responses, the, the combat troops who used this, had some pretty mixed feedback on it. There were a bunch of problems that they report. Uh, issues of reliability. The gun is open bolt, which means it's op there's a lot of openings in this thing. And they complained about how there, there's a lot of explosions going on. There's a lot of mud, dirt, water, sand in the trenches that they're fighting in. These guns get dirty pretty quickly, and then they don't run reliably. There were problems with the recoil spring. It goes into a hole drilled in the buttstock, and the early guns had a fairly tightly fitted hole for the recoil spring. Well, you got into water and the stock would swell, that hole would constrict, the spring would get stuck and it would no longer function correctly. They had problems with magazine reliability. They didn't like the, the open bolt firing, which of course, you know, everyone knew was being fixed. But uh, there was good feedback that came back from these guns on the Eastern Front that allowed improvements to be made to the Sturmgewehr. In total, uh, 11,813 of these were manufactured by the end of September 1943. Uh, Full-scale production of the Sturmgewehrs, the closed bolt Sturmgewehrs, would begin in August of 1943. And at that point, once those guns get sent out, the, the, semi, the, the MKB-42Hs are basically culled out of service. Ammunition is being provided specifically only for the new closed bolt guns. It's not supposed to be issued to guys with these. If you have one of these, you're supposed to get rid of it. They want to get them back out of the field because they're an obsolete pattern. And there are, like, it's been improved. The Sturmgewehr is better than this. And so that essentially is the combat history, uh, lifespan of the MKB-42H. It, it was the first major development. It led the way. It did a really good job of it. They are now today exceptionally rare and cool collectibles because not many made. Very few of those came back from the Eastern Front uh, intact, uh, much less make it onto the US registry. And this one has. There are a number of transferable ones, including this. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I did do a video on the MKB42H about 10 years ago now, and I went back and rewatched it and realized there is a lot more information, like I, I need to really improve that video. Hopefully this has been an improvement, and hopefully you guys have enjoyed watching it. Thanks!